Previously on The Final Pitch. We're holding a resiliency exchange. I would like to invite you to present this one because in that venue, in that platform, you will have access to a lot of different LGUs. Um, we're going to be very open to that. Great. I'll give you two offers. One is I'll give you access to a minimum of a million to two million who would avail of this service. Then I give you a, a full scholarship on the ICE program. We're willing to accept the offer. Thank you. You have the things that, a venture, that we look for in a venture builder. So we'd like you to join us. Investor that we'll be part of is Turn 9170. This week, we get to know more about the president and CEO of UBX Philippines, John Yanuschak. And day two of the pitches continues. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders looking to fund and support the country's post-pandemic solutions. Li Hao Zhuang, President and CEO of leading Pan-Asian insurer, FWD Philippines. Vince Yaman, Managing Director of Globe Telecom's corporate venture builder, 917 Ventures. Joel Santos, President and co-founder of the School for Entrepreneurs and Innovators, FEMS International Business School. And John Yanuschak, President and CEO of the FinTech Venture Studio and Venture Fund of the Union Bank of the Philippines, UBX. Our goal is to find and support the new breed of heroes taking on the challenges of a post-pandemic future. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. John Yanuschak's collective experience in telecom, commercial software, banking, and insurance industries provides a unique and well-rounded perspective on digital platforms. He now heads UBX, one of the fastest growing fintech companies in Southeast Asia. I was born and raised in Canada, in, in North America. I grew up in just outside of Toronto, Ontario, yeah, which is the largest uh, city in Canada. I studied uh, astrophysics. But when I studied astrophysics, it was actually at the dawn of the digital era for the study of astronomy. When I left school, I discovered very quickly that uh, the skills that I had developed from a technology and a computer programming perspective, I discovered that they were very marketable. So that's the trajectory that my career took. I, I went from school into uh, telecom. I worked on developing systems for coax, fiber, and mobile plants uh, infrastructure for many, many years, and from commercial software to, to insurance, and now I'm here today. I started working when I, I believe when I was about 14 years old. I worked so that I could actually pay for my schooling. It taught me the value of hard work, taught me the value of money. Obviously, when you're juggling school and, and a job, um, you know, you have to be quite disciplined. You know, it taught me uh, perseverance and, and, and grit. I have two kids, and so my wife and I spend time with our kids. So we do, we do a lot of family things together. We love to travel. I enjoy music. Uh, one of my sons is very much into music. I'm still a bit of a techie, and so I love to play around with technology. I love to uh, explore new chips and, and pieces of hardware and software and uh, yeah. I've been coming to the Philippines since the late 90s and I moved here uh, permanently in 2012. So I had the opportunity to do business with Union Bank. The company I was with at the time was going through its own digital transformation and of course in working with Union Bank I had the opportunity to see firsthand how Union Bank was digitally transforming itself in earnest with a, a sense of urgency and a, a dedication to it that I, you know, I, I didn't see in others. So that really impressed me. So when the opportunity was presented to me to come to the Union Bank family, I jumped at that opportunity. I started as a consultant with Union Bank. The work that I was doing was uh, working on the strategy 
that ultimately led to the uh, spin-off of UVX in uh, December 2018, and, uh, and I was employee number one. So I started in my, in my current role. Um, there was myself and about uh, 20 uh, very brave people from the bank, and we set up UBX, and from there we recruited and, and set up structures, and now we are uh, where we are today. I think one interesting note about John Jay is that he talks to us every day. In fact, that, that's the first order of business. Uh, we have a stand-up at 8.30 a.m., entire man come uh, talking about what are we going to do for the day, what are, we, what are the important things that we have to accomplish. So that's one thing, no? he's very visible as a CEO. Oh, and he loves hockey. John's a very proud Canadian. As you know, we're, we're always on Zoom calls, right? And he has this thing that he changes the background during the Zoom calls and it's always a different uh, like scenery in, in Canada. Like he also makes a lot of jokes which nobody can relate to because we're not Canadian. <laughs> but, but yeah, but John's great. We have a, a lot of diversity in the management side. We have people there who have been founders. We have people there who have been leaders of tech companies. And we have those like me who came from Union Bank. So those coming from Union Bank provides, you know, the certain level of governance because, you know, in, in banking, uh, governance is very stringent. It, it, we, we, we work, we're, we're heavily regulated. So it complements well to the out-of-the-box thinking of those coming from the fintech and technology landscape. I guess we're very open and collaborative. You could probably see it in our office. There's no walls. We're a very flat organization. We value collaboration a lot. Yeah, I think it's a required thing for our nature of business, um, being in fintech, right? We have to be open, very innovative, and very much, um, I guess, very agile. Our vision for UBX is really to provide opportunity and access to all. You know, the very nature of our business is to support entrepreneurs and to support the building of businesses and so so the culture here very much reflects that mission so young open entrepreneurial one of the things that uh, digital and digital platforms enables is it really lowers the boundary to financial services and so by creating platforms for digitally underserved communities we allow them to uh, digitize themselves and to be future proof we're also providing cost-effective access to financial services to communities that have typically been, uh, if not unbanked, uh, underbanked. But you know, what we're really doing and what our vision really is, is to provide opportunity and access to all. By the nature of us running a venture studio and a venture fund, we are always looking to invest in great ideas and in great talent. I'd be inclined to, to fund the $100,000 at the level you're requesting. So John Jay and UBX, um, I accept your offer. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> so like many of the things we do, Final Pitch is another avenue or another opportunity for us to meet great talent, to meet entrepreneurs, to meet founders, and to get exposure uh, to their ideas. What we're looking for is, you know, very basic things. What is the value proposition? Which is just fancy language for what's the problem that they're trying to solve? How are they gonna solve it? Who is the target market? How big is that market? And how are you gonna engage with that market? From a founder or from a talent or an entrepreneurial perspective, we're obviously looking uh, for people who have these big ideas. Uh, we're looking for people who think big. We're looking for people with perseverance, with grit, um, but also with openness. You have to have the passion for the idea, but also the openness to measure, to learn, and adjust as necessary. For us, I don't consider us heroic. I think that being on Final Pitch is consistent with our vision, with our mission. I think it's consistent with our business model, being a venture studio and a venture fund. And I guess this is also our way, our duty almost, to support uh, the real heroes here, which are the entrepreneurs, the founders, the great talent uh, in this country that are going to revitalize our economy. Up next, 
This afternoon, we'll be presenting ClickEd. It's an open education portal. So how much is of that is production and studio cost? So we've pinned down our production costs here. Yeah, so it's 400,000 pesos per hour of content. Oh, <laughs> but again, these are initial ideas. We're definitely open to adjusting figures. First to pitch are social entrepreneurs who aim to fix the distance learning problems in the Philippines with their online education platform. Hey EJ Moses. <laughs> hey John. John. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So EJ, you were with us back in season two. That was three years ago. That was three years ago. You had your social enterprise, Akaba. I, I still do you actually. Still, you still yeah, have it. For sure, okay. yeah. But you are here now pitching a different business. I've been in the business of creating solutions for social problems. And with COVID, a lot popped up. So we have something new and hopefully you guys will like it. Okay, so I hope that this idea bears fruit after your pitch today. So guys, good luck. Thank Thanks, you, John. John. My name's EJ. And for the past seven years, I've been a full-time social entrepreneur. And this afternoon, we'll be presenting ClickEd. It's an open education portal. So ClickEd is a way for us to solve the many problems of distance learning in the Philippines because of the COVID pandemic. We need to understand that now there are digital platforms and digital content should be what's driving education now. And the traditional business models aren't working. Having synchronous classes is not going to work because of our infrastructure and our domestic setup in the Philippines. With intermittent connection, you can easily get disconnected from a live class. So this Boom. is why we have Ticket. <laughs> and from a synchronous business model, we'd like to move to a, an asynchronous business model wherein, yes, we put videos on demand, but we take the next step further by implementing authentication technology such as facial verification to make sure it's really the student. Let's implement some verification authentication tech already. When we can access the internet, it kind of works for all of us. But then for those who don't, then we have wireless local area networks to dispense this information through like maybe a five kilometer radius. And at the same time, depending on our industry partner, we can organize virtual classrooms and learning labs. And speaking of industry partners, we just partner with legitimate groups already. We're bridging their existing accredited programs and then making that a viable option online. So again, it's really simple. We want our students and our learners to learn through quality pre-produced, pre-recorded content that's available on demand. And then we want to measure their knowledge through by administering online-based examinations. Last is to verify, and I think this is very important. Again, it's not just about attendance, it's also about attention. And last is to certify. Here in the Philippines, education is everything, but you can't prove that without a certificate that people can recognize. So again, we'll either be partnering with the Department of Education or under other bodies in the PRC. So we have two products under this platform. The first is very simple. It's a continuing professional development program. Every three years, any licensed professional will be required to complete 45 hours of seminars. That's around 45 to 60,000 Every three years, the licensed professionals have to spend in the, for them to be able to renew their professional license. So we're digitizing existing curriculums in a secure platform and we're definitely going to make it more affordable. Last is an alternative learning solution using localized, specialized, and inclusive content. This is digitizing the alternative learning system, which is designed for basic education dropouts out and of out-of-school school youth. youth. Uh -uh. And of course, the Indigenous People's Education curriculum is so implemented by the DEPED. We want to tap a grant pool of over 2 billion pesos in the Philippines that's being given away to NGOs. First of all, we want to offer this uh, program for free. Um, we'd like to offer the judges the opportunity to join us. We are co-founding shareholders and we are giving 20% ownership for platform development at the cost of 2.5 million pesos. Or if you'd like to become a curriculum partner, we would um, ask for 3 million pesos with a profit share na 30% for all content under that curriculum that we produce and develop for perpetuity. We believe in moderating the greed and making everyone have a win-win situation. The world is changing, guys. And we're running the risk of people not being educated very well. And people are paying for this. Why, why can't we solve that? And we'd like to have you guys join us to help us solve it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Love your presentation. I think both of you make great partners. Um, thank you. <laughs> and you talk about a topic that is highly, highly personal and passion uh, uh, of mine. Uh, I, I love teaching. So, you know, you're preaching to the gospel. 
not many people know, but FWD actually, we, we can almost say that we run a full-time learning institute, right? Because we, like many other insurance companies, we train thousands of people every year. So um, when I look at your solution, what I see could be potentially a differentiator. It's the, uh, the monitoring part, the, uh, the facial recognition part. We'll, uh, we'll be happy to explore further with you. Right, I think two areas. One is whether that part of the technology can be incorporated into our current learning platform. Or the other part is, you know, you may have a very new way of teaching our agents. So yes. in terms of content creation, we'll love to talk to you about that as well. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much. We would love that opportunity. That's pretty cool. You said that nonprofit will only happen after you make profit on the... Are those the stages? So, since this is a shared platform, um, this can run parallel or this can run independently. And how we tend to fund that, for example, is for, for at least for this one, is to get seed money for at least six million. That's why you need to do the, the for profit side first, a stage one, before you can, because you need something to fund the ALS yes. and the IP Ed, right? Yes. So, how much is of that is production and studio cost? So we've thinned down our production costs here, and we want to work with independent creator studios kasi. Yeah, so it's 400,000 pesos per hour of content. Oh. <laughs> but again, these are initial ideas. We're definitely open. So why don't I uh, start off with an offer? Uh, I have resources to cover your production costs for the non-profit side. I'm in a hurry to do the non-profit side because they are the marginalized. So assuming we come to an agreement and my designers approve what you guys have put together from a curriculum perspective, we'll fund the production side. This is jumping a few steps for us. Thank you very much. This is, yeah, wow. I'll build on what uh, Joel has offered. I think on the Ashoka side, we do have learning modules on good systems thinking and change making for young people. This is something that's not offered in a regular school curriculum, but it's very much needed. We have the curriculum. If he will build a production for this one, <laughs> you can put it in the platform. Yes, let's piece things together. That's the name of our game. Thank you, oh my God. Oh, thank you. When you have the content, we should you know, come back together and talk about distribution. Once you have that nailed, even for a small niche, then I think the distribution part we can easily handle. So, but very thankful for the opportunity. We definitely are looking forward to um, collaborating, um, doing our presentations, and to definitely um, build up this solution. Thank you. Thank you. We got more than what we wanted. I think we really wanted to do the nonprofit because we saw the profit as a way to jumpstart it. I think when they saw the passion for the nonprofit, I guess they really got on board. John always does a great job every season. Um, and this season, I'd like to thank everybody off at the final pitch for just giving a platform for social solutions. I think that's really important at this time. And it's and, nice that somebody's doing it. Yeah, and for making this happen. Very generous. <laughs> We've been doing digital transformation for two years, so that's one of our assets. So um, we just have to see if it's good content, right? Yes, Which, exactly. Yeah. If they have the content, then we'll produce it. Up next. We are the Ateneo Tulung Sulung program. We actually want to go for asking for 3 million pesos to bring us forward to 140 beneficiaries. I do have to point out, there's a gap that I see in the model. A lockdown happens in the community, whatever livelihood project, it's closed. The next ones on stage are alumni members of a university whose values represent the collective desire to help vulnerable members of society in this time of the pandemic. Hey Maan and Donnie. Hi, Hi John. John. So welcome to the show. Uh, we are batchmates yes. from Ateneo. So Maan, you being a social entrepreneur yourself, I'd like to know what does this mean for you, uh, this program that uh, you've spearheaded alongside our other batchmates? This is an honor for us to be part of Ateneo's Tulong Sulong because the message that we want to come across is that social entrepreneurship is one way for us to help people out of poverty. This will enable us to actually do our work 
no, fast, efficiently, and easy because Ateneo was already able to connect us to communities that they're supporting. So we're looking forward to it. Since you know we came from Ateneo, we've always had the values of Magis or doing more, also being men and women for others. Also, most importantly at this time, it's really nation building, or in this case, nation rebuilding. Yes. I think it's very yes. important that we've come together uh, to try to make this happen. So, Man and Doni, you're up next. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Andoni Albert. And I'm Maan Sikam. We are the Ateneo Tulung Sulung program. Our desire is to help others advance their lives. Sometime in April 2020, Ateneo High School Batch 1995 consulted and connected with the Ateneo Dream Team or the Disaster Relief and Management Team. And we consulted with them to ask them how we could help and participate in their current COVID relief efforts, which primarily revolved around PPEs and feeding programs. In consultation, the group realized that this would be short-lived and that we needed to challenge the Ateneo to be able to come up not just with a feeding and PPE program, but perhaps something more sustainable, a livelihood program. We partnered with the Ateneo Alumni Association, and we also partnered with the university's social development office, who are already connected to these vulnerable communities and already working and caring for them. What we did was to launch the Ateneo Tulung Sulung program together with them and bring forward the four social entrepreneurs together with four communities of the Ateneo. Our goal in the Tulung Sulung program is first to care for the communities, then to coach and teach them with the social entrepreneurs' livelihood and social enterprise so that they can create and we can co-create with them their own net income. We selected the four communities, not just by their need of the program, not just by their need from Tulung Sulong, but also in their infrastructure and organization's readiness to accept this program. And so we chose to partner with four social entrepreneurs. Now these four social enterprises are already known and recognized in their own industry. The first enterprise is Habi Lifestyle. The company proudly offers local, and artisanal products partnered with communities all over the Philippines. The next company is Happy Helpers, like what I'm wearing today. We are a home service company dedicated to unmessing people's lives delivered with happiness. The next is Palamigan Co. They provide micro ice plants powered by low-cost freezing technology all over the country. Last but not least, is Startup Leather Craft. It's a company that aims to teach leather craft skill and entrepreneurship so that we can fill in the growing demand for leather crafters. We come here to provide what we call an impact partnership offer. Of course, we are already funding, teaching, we already have the programs, but we want to be able to make the impact go wider and faster. Right now, our focus are outcomes. What are the outcomes? The outcomes is income, for the families. But how are we going to offer this impact partnership? Well, we have two options. The first option is a 1 million peso impact partnership. And the 1 million impact partnership will focus on 80 beneficiaries. And this will be able to create 5.1 million pesos on the first year for these families, and maybe a minimum of 38.4 million pesos over five years. We actually want to go for asking for 3 million pesos to bring us forward to 140 beneficiaries. And this will allow them and their families to take home 9 million on the first year and 67 million over five years for their households. These are just some of the different ways that we are going to partner and make sure that there is sustainability in this partnership over five years. With your partnership, we can help the country bounce back. We can all help in this project by giving. And that's what Ateneo Tulong Sulong is about. It's about helping our country by activating the local economies and giving hope to our vulnerable citizens. Maraming salamat. And for our final pitch, uh, we have asked one of our esteemed batchmates, former Senator Bam Aquino, uh, to speak to you and to speak to the Filipino.
25 years out of high school, the Ateneo High School Batch 1995 decided to have a very different homecoming last year. Instead of the usual homecoming in the campus, we decided with the pandemic raging, a lot of difficulties, obstacles, challenges, and suffering around us to have an online homecoming instead. Through the homecoming, we launched the Tulong Sulong program whose partners support communities to get them out of poverty through innovative and sustainable ways. So this is our final pitch. Please support the Ateneo High School Batch 1995 and the partners of the Tulong Sulong program to fulfill their mission and spread more hope this year. Thank you. Hi, Anoni. Hi, Ma'an. Thanks so much for your presentation. Very, very inspiring. I think you really showed your Malasakit spirit through your passion into the community. And FWD is completely committed and we're so passionate too about giving back to the community. I think um, not specifically to just put money up front, but we are really interested to work with you both from voluntary of our staff's time, uh, making your community part of our preferred supplier for some of the premiums that you have, and um, hopefully some employment opportunities and career opportunities for them too. Yeah. So well done, and I look forward to working all with all of you. Thank, Thank you. So this is currently a project, but what's your vision for this? So we're not startups, we're actually scale-ups who are ready to go into various communities. So it's really just a very good synergy because these are Ateneo communities that are taken care of already. And we are just enterprises waiting for our turn to empower and give livelihood to all these communities. This is a wonderful idea and as Tulong Sulong and also as, as Happy Helpers, I would also want to make available the Women's Social Entrepreneurs Program of, of Ashoka. I mean, if you want to participate... I actually was part of the first cohort. I know! Because <laughs> I'm thinking of... Um, you are in the pipeline, yeah. man. Yeah. So we're looking at um, social entrepreneurs who are creating systemic change. Mm. So I would love to have another conversation <laughs> with you on yes. that one. It's something that we, we can explore as yes. well. Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. Congratulations and keep Thank it you, up. thank you very much. From a venture point of view, looking forward to have a conversation around, you know, how could our program scale you faster? I would love to get into that conversation in a little bit more detail. So whether after it be the program, sir. Yeah, after the program. <laughs> it could be in the Velocity program, yeah. batch two, or it could be immediately, right? So yeah. Definitely, sir. We're talking about systemic change. Uh, I do have to point out, there's a gap that I see in the model and I would like to offer, we can provide uh, the safe management training to the community so that in the end, right, a lockdown happens in the community, whatever livelihood project that we're doing, it, it's, it's closed, right, and they cannot move around. So that's my offer, is to, to add another component to, to your model and that's the safe management, particularly in the time of pandemic. Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you for all of your kind words, but uh, more importantly, thank you for your offer of support and your encouragement for us to continue this journey. More so, this is your words really not to us, but your words to the families for them to actually move forward and to create impact in their own lives. So again, thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Congratulations. Thank you again. Thank you. We felt uh, encouraged. Uh, we felt so supported. It was just uh, the gift that kept giving um, in terms of the, the support that they, they wanted to give to the communities. Thank you for this opportunity. It, it's such an abundance for, for you to offer this gift to us and that we can pass this on to our community. So thank you, Kailanovich. I think if they can scale up, it's for, you know, for everyone's benefit. I hope that it could really be a model for a community that goes through a holistic safe management, the understanding of the pandemic on the grassroots level. Yeah. Mm. Exciting. Looking forward to working with them. Next time on The Final Pitch, we get a sneak peek at how FWD is breathing new life into the insurance industry. And day two of the pitches comes to a close. I'm not sure if you can actually sell it. Some of the campaigns that you mentioned here are pretty basic, so we, we don't actually need a company like yours to tell us to do that. I, I see the passion. I see the big heart and the willingness. You know, but there's a lot of gaps. In other words, it's really raw.